Okay. There we go. Alright. Grab the nuts. This is more iron. More iron ore. Oh, do I not have the beacons equipped? I do not, because I got the chainsaw. Butt pokes with the big stick. Okay. We got a lot of slugs all over the place. It would be probably smart for me to start grabbing them. Now, honestly, uh, the thing that would probably be coolest for me is if people actually asked me asked me to like voice characters. Yeah, it had a mere, weird imagination moment of a person asking crazy old wander or asking wander for the crazy old person voice. I would gladly do that. Like, no joke. If a developer said like, "Hey, I'm making a game, and you have a really good like insane person like insane old man voice. Can can you use it?" I'd be like, "Sure." Because, to some small degree, uh, one of the things that I would like to slowly break into doing would be voice acting, actually. Um, it's not a particularly high need, just because I'm not that good at it. But, like, it would be kind of cool to slowly build up a portfolio and just kind of voice random villains and just uh, old coots for a while. I also like to uh, take lessons, but lessons take time, and I'm busy. Voice acting is hard to get into, I hear. They like to use the same 20 people over and over. Yeah, I've heard endlessly. I've I, I've had multiple weird dreams and nightmares where I'm just like, ah, shit, it's that guy again. And it is. It's always that guy again or somebody else. Did you do it for people that only started making games? I'd have to see the game first. I, for example, I wouldn't voice, like, an RPG Maker game, probably. I... How would I put it? I have some standards. I don't have much. Uh, I guess my standards would straight up be... Is it a game that I would cover on my YouTube channel? Because if yes, then I'd probably be okay with lending my voice to it. Okay, let's go up onto this bluff and see if I can find some things. I've seen some RPG Maker games that are passable. Most are not, though. And that's kind of my issue. Yeah, would you voice Rise of the Slime? I mean, I don't know how I would voice it, but yes? Yeah, is it worth taking my time away from streaming and editing for YouTube? Is that a, uh, as a good benchmark? Pretty much. It's mainly just one of those where it's like... Let's see, want directions to hard drives. Yeah, I could probably use them. Because I... The one that I know about, I don't have the resources for, and it's going to take a lot to, to get. I was hoping there'd be one or two more in the desert, but I don't see them. So it's going to go high next. Uh, let's see. Right at the waterfall, bring concrete. 200 concrete, okay? I guess I'm probably going to run out getting there, maybe. This is going to be fatal. Nope, not fatal. But hurdy. Uh, I might actually be able to get up that. Well, while we're here, we can get we can get another slug. Oops. Okay. I'm sorry, slug. I'll get my inventory. Hmm. 
Come back here. I wish to beat you with my stick. There we go. I'm probably on the wrong journey, but that's okay. This mineral shows early levels akin to synthetic quartz manufactured on Earth and can be used to improve communication and exploration technologies. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. Okay, there it is. Anything else here? Yeah, I see a couple of those. Well, time to die horribly? Maybe not. Okay. I'm a little shocked this is okay. Oop! Oop! Wow, okay, they die a lot faster in this game. I was, uh, or not in this game, odd uh, with this, with this slugger. Yep. Okay, can I? So we definitely have something up here. How expensive is this? Not enough to stop me. Yeah, okay. There we go. Hopefully that's enough. It is not. Going down this is going to hurt a bit. But that's okay, because I believe I can fly. I can also grab this guy. I really wish there was, like, the binocular map system in this game, like, in Breath of the Wild. Like, how rad would it be if you could actually, like, point at things with a beacon? Like, a beacon rifle would actually be really nice. Just be like, yo, that looks cool. Yo, that's, uh, that's a slug there. That's another slug there. That looks suspicious. Like, there's a lot you could do. Ooh, that's coal over there. It's not near any water, though. Still, nice to know. Okay, uh. Okay. So I'm going to drop down onto this. Go there. Go here. I see the crash pod. Okay. We didn't just slip off to the side. These free freaking arches are spooky, and I don't like them. Okay, that did hurt. Looks like this is all good, I guess. Looking ambush monster. Okay, anything else here? No. What do you need? Ten rotors. I 
thought you said this needed concrete. And I'm pretty sure I can only make eight. Oh, concrete up to get it. I see. Well, we got the rotors. We just have to go get them. Well, at least it's a relatively easy way. Back up. Let's see, no beacon? I know where it is. Okay. Okay. Slug hunting. There we go. Also, sup, Batbeard? How, how's life? How you doing? Okay, can I... Can I actually just... Yeah, it looks like I can... I can just manually walk this. I don't need any concrete. Well, that works out well for me. Okay, getting back up might be a bit, bit dodgier. Okay, we want to do ramps. Okay, there we go. And with a little bit of elbow grease, I can get back up. Does hurt sometimes though. Doing well stocking up on supplies and limiting my time outdoors. Or indoors with other people. I mean, that's the way to do it. That's what I'm doing. Admittedly, we're getting our groceries uh, via delivery now. So hopefully, hopefully whoever is delivering our groceries are not plagued. Now, all you people talking about toilet paper do you not have bidets. I don't have one, and when I suggested it to Shell, she's like, I could just use a, you could just use a spray bottle, and I'm like, something about that just feels extremely gross to me. Like, a bidet I can work with, but a spray bottle just sounds gross. What is Operation Waffle House? Normally, <laughs> everybody's reaction, uh, Waffle House, so normally I do Spaghetti Factory, which is just conveyor belts everywhere. This is actually, like, an incredibly organized, uh, factory, comparatively. Obviously, it's getting a little out of hand, but, like, whatever. I think the main thing about bidets, though, is at least everywhere I have ever lived, bidets are crazy pants, and whoever uses them is insane and probably European. And I don't think there's really been... Much like, much attempts, many attempts in the U.S. to, like, understand. Bidets and, like, why would anybody use a bidet or anything like that. And so, like, despite the fact that I'm sure they're actually quite practical, uh, I think just a lot of people are going to poo-poo them just because, oh, wait. I'm putting these things into my inventory, and I don't want to be doing that. I want to go the opposite direction. Uh, let's see. Put these over. Sort this down. Sort this. Anything in here that I don't really need? No. Chainsaw, though. 
the first time I've heard of them in the US. I think it's just a matter of like kind of advertising and some other stuff like people just don't know what they are don't think they're a good idea it's kind of a mix I'm receptive to it but you know obviously then I'd have to get it for my house and some other things but yeah uh, I guess TLDR would have the day is it's a butt faucet just gonna put it out there like that's what it is instead of like I feel uncomfortable about that and yet you're comfortable jamming your hand up your ass to wipe repeatedly like it's actually like it's actually a really good idea you just have to get used to the idea of it but is this is this fake water here oh this is fake water you can tell. Funny. But yeah, definitely something that's a bit of an acquired taste. But at the same time, like... I don't know. Let's see, it's environmentally friendly and cheaper. That assumes your water processing is environmentally fri friendly. I mean... No matter what, unless you're, like, throwing away your gross toilet paper, but even then, like... Ugh. But it, no matter what, it's still better than, like, the vast amount of toilet paper that most people probably use. It's just... Yeah, it's just not an American thing for whatever reason. I like it out of the moment I say, like, it's a... It's a butt faucet. I just lose six viewers. Welcome, anybody that has never watched me before, we are talking about bidets. For reasons. Okay. It looks like I'll be able to get, get back no problem. Yeah, we're... Uh, I don't know where everybody watching this lives, but like... There are going to be toilet paper shortages in the world as people make crazy toilet paper thrones for some goddamn reason. Uh, thinking that, like, they're never going to be able to buy toilet paper again during this epidemic. The answer is, like, I saw somebody buying, like, ten boxes at a certain point. I'm just like, there's, there's actually no circumstance where you're going to, you are going to die of starvation before you run out of toilet paper. You should be buying an insane amount of canned food instead. I don't get it. Like, obviously, always make sure you have, like, two to four weeks worth of stuff. Like, that's, that's safe and smart. But, like... Some of the doomsday preppers are insane. Like, I know, I, I don't know, I was watching at least a couple of videos of people straight up fist fighting over, um, over, like, toilet paper, and it's just like, that, don't. It helps no one, least of all you. Especially because, like, if this were the end of the world, like, toilet paper is the least of your worries. Okay. I'm just gonna wave my hands at some of these. Yeah, so I lined it up right. On the plus side, a lot of stores are actually starting to put limits on the sort of thing. So, you, like, straight up, uh, when I was, when I was ordering groceries for tomorrow, uh, from Whole Foods, they're like, yeah, you can only have one. I was like, nice. Of course, there's a very real possibility they'll still sell out, which will suck. But, you know, I already have a package sitting around, so it's not like I'm in dire straits and I'll just be like, can you just deliver it when you have it in? Like, honestly, I was 
kind of would like that system, especially during a pandemic. Just, just have like everybody puts in their order, and you know when stuff becomes available, it just rolls in. And instead of people being like, "I'm going to go to the store and hoard like a shit ton and spread diseases everywhere," because I'm probably, I probably haven't washed my hands in weeks. Oh god, what was it? There was a guy on the news a while back that's like, "I am a big strong man with a big strong." immune system and germs aren't real anyway so I never wash my hands and I'm like oh god oh god you are just the most disgusting person luckily I don't watch that news station to begin with so it's not so bad but it was just kind of like I lost even more respect from for you than I thought thought I could what are you gonna do scrap mechanic survival mode eh probably it's not a high priority on my list, but it's not like a low priority either. Oh, right. Ten minutes on a hard drive. Oh. Funny how now there's a pandemic afoot and the anti-vax crowd has fallen silent. No, they haven't. You just don't hear about them because they're getting drowned out by everybody else. But uh, there are some crazy people. Still lurking around. Are we really... Uh, let's go take a look at this. How's this starting to stack up? We got 47. That's considerably less than I'd like. Hmm. What's so bad about vaccines? Not really... Uh, a lot of people think they cause autism or the disease itself. Uh, so, I haven't... I haven't really been paying attention to the whole anti-vax anything just because it's, it's insane pants. And, like, anybody that... Anybody that subscribes to that belief system is usually not worth anybody else's time. Um... But, like, vaccines absolutely have chemicals in them that most people would normally never consider putting into their bodies. But because it's in a well-tested medical environment, yeah, it's okay. But a lot of people are like, there's mercury in there. Evil. And it's like, eh, not really. Uh, and there's a lot of other people that are like, you're putting a disease into me. Evil. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's like a really shitty version that your immune system can beat up and then know how to fight in the future so that if you do run into, say, smallpox, you don't get smallpox because your immune system is like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. But yeah, it's, it's, it's morons that failed high school chemistry bitching about chemicals generally. Uh, but yeah, so the that last argument where people have been saying like, why would I inject myself with the disease? That means anybody that gets a vaccine is actually just becoming a willy ca willing carrier of the uh, a disease and like a bunch of other stuff. And it's just like, it's the dumbest shit. But people will gladly ascribe to it because... Shit, I don't know. Most people that are anti-vax have even taken high school chemistry. Actually, uh, interestingly enough, the anti-vax movement is particularly... Um, what I say? It's particularly popular amongst educated people because it's one of those belief systems that is spread not through like regular media news for the most part but actually through like websites and like social circles and whatnot uh, and it's it's one of those where a lot of people uh, share it around social media uh, share it you know share news articles being like look the secrets out there you know you just need to do some research uh, and there's enough quote-unquote research out there that a lot of people will be like, Oh yeah, you know, this actually, this makes sense. Um, like, I've even talked to my dad about this in the past, as 
as a person that used to make vaccines before going out to work for the military, um, he's like, yeah, there's, there's some dodgy stuff in there, but like, duh. Most medicine is not exactly the most, uh, organic. Uh, but so, yeah, that's the thing. It's a lot of people that are going, like, full organic and whatnot, and they start looking at the, the chemicals involved, and they're like, oh, it's bad! And... yeah. Uh, then they start going wackadoo as a result of it. Let's see. But it's kind of the equivalent of, like, anything in a vaccine is straight up going to be better for you than the alternative. And so the mild discomfort or chemicals or whatever, wildly outweighed by the general benefits of... ...the vaccine you are taking. Oh. That is the wrong variety. Actually, to some degree, I should probably... I should probably consolidate these. We've got some more iron lines that we're going to be connecting to, aren't we? I realize not all of these are splitters, but that's okay. Because we have at least two more major iron lines, and we're going to be... Okay. So this is a splitter here. But yeah, there's a reason why the, uh, what was it? What was the, what was the epidemic that was going around last year? Like, almost a year ago. Uh, specifically around, like, Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington and whatnot. It wasn't, oh, it was whooping cough. There we go. Thank you. But yeah, so whooping cough was making its rounds in this immediate area. And the answer is it's because it was a bunch of wild, somewhat conspiracy theory-believing uh, suburban parents that were just describing to, to this, you know, honestly insane Uh, let's see. I'm actually gonna put them like this for the time being. No, that ain't gonna work. This will split for the time being. We'll have to have more belts later, but this is okay. Okay, that's that's already looking a lot better. Why don't we actually go into logistics for a second? I'm gonna quick update all of the between belts because these cost almost nothing and should help balance faster. And I'm sure there's a lot of other reasons why the anti-vax movement is particularly popular, but it's... I think generally the point is, it's usually people that think they're smarter than they actually are, and might be educated but never really learned good critical thinking skills. I think that's actually something in general that the, uh, the American uh, education system is really bad at. We're not very good at teaching critical thinking, uh, and we never have been. It's very much learned by the book, but don't question it, because questioning it is hard. And I think that's not good. Let's see. Now, some people can have super rare reactions to vaccines. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, I've actually had a number of people in the past that I know that specifically are allergic or intolerant to certain vaccines. And that's part of the reason my herd immunity is so important. Because, yeah, if you are... If you can't use a vaccine, then um, you're reliant on everybody else around you being vaccinated. So, so you know, you don't get vi whooping cough from Jimmy next door because Jimmy's mother thinks vaccines are evil. 
and therefore when Jimmy gets the whooping cough, you pretty much don't have a choice but to get it yourself. Did I not line these up correctly? There we go. Yeah, it gives you the the anti-vax thing is that it gives you the illusion of control. It makes you feel smart and in control to know the truth about how to protect yourself and your kids. Yup. Yeah, then the people that get really really upset when you question about it, about it. It's um, oh, how would I even put it? It's pyramid scheme. Uh, mentality. It's it's actually part of the reason why pyramid schemes are particularly popular with a lot of people uh, that would normally be educated because, yeah, they weren't really taught to question why a pyramid scheme is bad. They know it's bad, but they don't know what to look for. They're just like, okay, stay away from a pyramid scheme. Easy. And so when an MLM comes, you know, knocking, they're like, what? That's not a pyramid scheme. What are you talking about? Whenever anybody else uh, questions them. Oh, <sighs> okay. Uh, let's see. Are we pretty much done? I guess we should go get that iron. Do I have enough? No. I need, I need at least a little bit more concrete. And we want to build at least two of those mining drills. Oh, hi. Is this steel one nice? It costs less iron. And it costs less coal. Yeah, that's a good point. There's no reason why... Yeah. No. I guess it's the best one that I've got here. Because the steel rotor is bad. Let's see, you're part of the anti-vax movement because you want to know what's in the vaccine and don't want the vaccine to uh, be a case of amount of luck if you have a bad reaction to the vaccine. The problem is, like, I'm not going to say that that mentality is inherently selfish. It, it is inherently selfish because, like, by that risk, well, by that point, like, you are putting a lot of other people at risk purely because you're afraid of what could happen. But by that logic, you should also never, ever, ever hop in a car. And if you're willing to hop in cars, then that means that, like, your risk aversion is... Maybe not misguided, but, like, you got all or nothing at that point, man. Like, there are very few things that I, I will say, like, I will be uncompromising on. But at that one, at that point, yeah, don't leave your house, don't ever drive, don't eat anything new. You're honestly more likely to discover a new food allergy than you generally are for a vaccine bad reaction. Okay, so how do we do this? Do we want to just pump more iron in? Maybe? Uh, 
don't like unaccountability. But the thing is, like, people are accountable. Like, if you get a bad reaction from a vaccine, like... That just straight up does... I mean, it happens. It happens so rarely. But, like, the thing is, by that logic... Go live in a cave out in the middle of nowhere, because that's the only way you're going to be able to avoid that. Okay, I totally forgot to make the, um, the mining drills. Okay, so let's make the portal miners and go from there. But yeah, it's straight up, like, most vaccines are, are very much like a, a public thing. Like, they, they disclose what's in them, uh, what they have in them. Doctors will straight up, like, ask you, like, hey, do you have any allergies to, like, these common ingredients? And the answer is, it's usually egg. Egg is the only thing that anybody really ever has any problems with. And so, nice part is, they actually have alternatives that don't actually have eggs. But again, like, I also reiterate my points, like, by that logic... You've effectively judged yourself as more important than every everybody else. Every person with cancer or every Im immunocompressed person in your general vicinity. And that's... I don't like that mentality. Main character syndrome is extremely, um... Dangerous. Like, don't get me wrong, like, I can see how it's spooky. I get that. It's just there's so many other things to be spooked about that vaccines are, like, one of the generally safest things that you can, um, you know, you can encounter. They're, they go through extremely rigorous testing. Especially because of the movement and the amount of doubts they get uh you know cast upon them if you want to if you want to get dodgy about stuff painkillers there you go never ever take uh you know prescription painkillers because that's almost that's almost always a guarantee uh that you're gonna get get something funky and not good if vaccines have worked so well we get to doubt them now i was actually thinking about this uh Specifically with, uh, pandemic response and whatnot. It's like IT. It's, uh... If it's working well, no one knows and everybody thinks it's a waste of money. If it's not working well, then, uh... Well, if it's not working well, then everybody knows and wants more of it? I don't know. It, when you fired your whole IT team... You know, things might go well until you get that emergency, and then, boy howdy, you wish you hadn't fired the IT team along the way. Tylenol is the leading cause of acute liver failure, outweighing all other causes. Really? I actually had no, about, no idea about that. The main thing about painkillers is we've never found something that does the job to a significant degree without being habit-forming. Yup. It's also one of those where it's really... It's, uh... It's a bad look if people find out that your pa your prescription painkiller is uh, extremely addictive, and so that tends to be one of the things that gets hidden. Because addictiveness is, like, one of the one things that people generally don't test for uh, when it comes to, like, side effects. You know, it's not like... I mean, it is, but it's kind of one of those where it's like prescription painkillers... Uh, what is... What's the... What's the really popular one that's been, like, the super gateway drug recently? Percocet. I think it's, it's stuff like Percocet and whatnot. Heavily controlled prescription painkillers. 
No, it's not morphine. Mor morphine is absolutely, like, regulated and stuff, but, you know, the kind that they hand out to people after you break your leg or whatever. Um, Oxycontin. There we go. That's the one. So Oxycontin is extremely addictive with almost no real side effects immediately, but the problem is since it's such a controlled substance, people get really hooked on them. And then, you know, when they get off Oxycontin, then it's like, well, shit, I need more of that. Uh, how about... Uh, you know, cocaine. Well, maybe not cocaine, but uh, the, opi the opioid epidemic that we've been going through. Is it an epidemic? I don't know. The opioid issues that we've been having, in the U.S. especially, have been... Uh, that's... A lot has to... A lot of that has to do with just extremely irresponsible, um... Management. From, like, drug companies and whatnot. It's exactly the history of heroin. Yeah. Well... Heroin started as, like, a, a medicinal drug, and then they restricted it because the side effects are actually really bad for you. Uh, let's see. But the flip side on all of that is, you don't generally have people taking vaccines more than once. You have a lot of people taking a lot of Percocet. It's not great. Okay. Yeah, heroin is still used in hospitals. In very... Yeah, it is. But it's... From what I know, it's usually for, like, end-of-life care and stuff, where addiction doesn't matter so much. Like... I don't remember which grandfather it was, but he was on... He was on heroin for most of the last couple months of his life, just because... Yeah, he was dying. Go figure. Okay, so I didn't actually get the iron mine that I meant to go for, but still. I wanted to talk about other things. We should stop soon. And switch to something else along the way. Uh, let's see. What do we even have in my inventory? What is this stuff? Oh, it's all iron. I'm just gonna toss it. I know I could throw it back up into the, uh, smelters up upstairs, but that's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> Some stock market. How's that going? Oh, god. Do we want to talk about that? I have lost, I think, $20,000 in stocks. <laughs> I have been, I've been watching that. It's, uh, oof. I've got, uh, I, I can talk about this in a somewhat flippant manner. So I've been slowly investing uh, a lot of my excess money into, you know, total index stock market stuff, Vanguard funds. You know, the, the real, like, my first investing situation. And, uh, yeah, so I, I've been, I've been doing that on my, my own over the past, like, two years because I finally have an income that lets me, you know, Put some money away. And, you know, a month ago I was sitting at, like, X amount. And, jeez, I think I've lost 20-something thousand cents. And it's going to go down even further. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, stock market's not doing great. But it's kind of one of those where I just look at it and I'm like, whoo, every time. How would I... It's like, uh... I guess from my perspective, it's like watching America's Funniest Home Videos, except for it's people's livelihood. But every once in a while, I'll just check check the uh, the price of my my stock portfolio, and I'm like, whoo! Yeah, long term, I will absolutely be fine. But anybody that was meaning to retire this year is in for a sad, sad situation. And also, anybody that is fairly panicked. Uh, tends to panic in emergencies. Because I know in like 2008, a lot of people who were fine weren't planning on retiring anytime soon were still just like, oh shit, stock market's crashing, better sell, and lost all of their money. And it's like, I remember it happened. And I was like, so do, what's up with this, mom? And my mom was like, don't even ask about it. Asking like, 
two years. So two years later, uh, when I was in college, a sophomore in college, I was like, so, stock market. And she's like, oh, we came out on top. And I'm like, yeah, thought so. And the thing is, like, if the <laughs> selling now is pointless because you either lose or society collapses and it doesn't matter. So it's better to just, like, hold tight and wait. Oh, can I not step on this thing? I can't. Okay, so at this point, unfortunately, I think I'm just gonna have to wait. There's some more, there's some more stuff I could do to make this more efficient, but what we really need is just ah, significantly faster belts, and that's the kind of thing that I can just let run on my own, and we'll come back later. Because yeah, we just need a lot of reinforced iron plates, and we got 47. I should probably scale up the production they're in. But we also have to go find some more uh some more hard drives out here, and that's gonna take a while. So I'm I'm just gonna save and we're gonna switch games. Cause I think no matter what we're gonna be able we're just gonna be stuck on dark topics here, and I should probably uh get out of Moody Broody town. Even though like I, is it is the word zeitgeist? Like, I, I think currently, public zeitgeist is just going to be stuck on these dark topics no matter what. The spirit or mood of a particular period of history is shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. Yeah, so the zeitgeist right now is, is absolutely just stuck on dark topics, moody broody stuff, and just all sorts of things. And so, like, we're not going to be able to escape it. I'm trying to be at least somewhat positive, or at least realistic of things. Uh, yeah, realistic about things, but it's also one of those where it's like, I apologize for anybody where your daily dose of escapism is currently being uh, infected by reality in a bad way. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go play something else for a little while.